Hi, uh, I'm Andrea Forte. Uh, I'm a professor in information science and I'm heavily involved in the HCI UX human computer interaction user experience master's degree in, uh, in CCI. So I, uh, I'm familiar with uh, many of the names on the participant list here. Uh, so it's great to see so, so much interest in this design competition. It's the first thing that we've done um, of this sort. So uh, I'm excited to, to see what comes out of it. Um, the inspiration for this competition is really, so CCI is thinking a lot about the future of what, what graduate education looks like and what does it mean to, uh, to get a, a, an advanced degree in something like uh, human computer interaction or user experience or the many other areas that we have students pursuing uh, degrees in the college. And we're rethinking the old paradigm of you sign up for a master's degree and you go through and you do all of the required courses and at the end you have uh, a very similar degree to everyone else and trying to reimagine what it would be like to develop uh, advanced education options that allow students to create their own master's degrees to create their own specializations so to give you smaller chunks of of content that you can put together to create a degree. This is a very different way of thinking about, uh, about, about a master's degree. So, uh, so it, it, it poses an interesting design challenge. How do we create an interface that allows people to mix and match small chunks like certificates in order to yield uh, a degree that makes sense? Um, so the, the design challenge here is not really about a uh, novel interface paradigm like, you know, VR or AR or the kinds of things that we might be thinking about um, in, in, some, in some design contexts, but it's really about communicating complex information in a way that makes sense to people intuitively. And so it's really a perfect fit for the kind of expertise that, um, that Drexel UXers uh, bring into the mix. And that's why we wanted to engage students in, in working on this problem and not just rely on our excellent um, development team uh, within the college, uh, but also to reach out and understand how students are think might think about this problem and what kind of uh, ways you would, would present information in this context. So we want to develop a web-based application um, that will allow people to explore the possibilities of mixing and matching certificates to create a sort of roll your own master's program um, that fits your goals. So that's the that's that's the challenge in a nutshell. Um, you'll see on Dev Post we have the um, the rules of the competition here. Uh, the desired outcomes are a web-based system. We don't expect anyone to build the web-based system. We have developers for that. What we're really looking for is an interesting set of prototypes that allow us to think about um, interactivity on the web in a way that would facilitate the kind of exploration that we're talking about. Um, so we have a $1,500 first prize and a runner-up $1,000 prize for, um, for the competition. Uh, individuals can compete, but teams are um, encouraged. Teams tend to be the gold standard for design because it's hard to be as, as flexible and creative when you're one mind alone. Um, individual submitters must be enrolled in some CCI program. Uh, you don't have to be an HCI UX student. Um, and a team should include at least one student who's enrolled in a CCI program. Uh, and the deadline is January 4th. So uh, we'll be looking at originality and creativity, the ways that um, this information is communicated. Uh, how intuitive it is, how easy it is for folks to pick up. And then we are expecting some kind of feedback to come with the design to understand what its strengths are and what its weaknesses. So that's my high level overview. Um, I don't know if we want to go straight to how do you use dev post or if we want to take a pause and get take some questions at this point. I guess we won't make a break for questions now. Does anyone have any questions? Hi, my name is Kim. Um, thank you, Dr. Forte and team for this competition, first off. 
I do have a question when you mentioned about certificate programs. Now, are these program like certificates Drexel based or are these kind of like industry wide known certificates? So these, the specifics, the ones that exist now, I can, um, let's see, whoops, whoops, whoops. Um, Um, I can just give you a quick look at, um, uh, here we go. So here we have, this is just my, my shorthand way of finding things in our catalog. <laughs> uh, so you can see we have these certificates listed here. There's actually a whole uh, bunch of certificates in, in the process of being developed right now that will be launched in fall of 2021. Um, so imagine this list is about doubled, um, at least, actually more than that. Um, and our goal is to allow students to mix and match certificates to build out a degree program like uh, the ones listed over on the left. Um, so in this way, we don't have to develop a series of brand new degree programs constantly to keep up with the market. We can um, develop certificates. And so, no, you wouldn't, you wouldn't take a certificate from like a, you know, a Microsoft offering or something like that um, and combine it with these. It would be a Drexel degree. And so it would include all Drexel certificates. Now, I, we would love to hear the ways that students would like these things to run. Um, so, so there's a lot of latitude in terms of imagining ways of mixing and matching certificates across, for example, you know, Westfall and uh, engineering and CCI. Um, those, this is an infrastructure that we're building to be able to tailor graduate degrees. So it should be able to grow. Um, and you can use your imagination as far as, the, it has to meet a, a few requirements you have to be able to put together certificates and see what degree pops out <laughs> but you can imagine all the certificates and degrees that you want um, you have a lot of latitude to to play with that hi andrea this is alex uh, so should we be expecting the number of certificates and degrees to grow over time so would the design have to accommodate for that the design should definitely accommodate um, new certificates um, popping up very quickly. Degree programs would be slower to grow. Um, that's part of why the certificates are useful is because it allows us to create new paths to an advanced degree without having to create entirely new advanced degrees. Um, so uh, so I, would, I would say scalability is definitely something that we want to think about where you know the number of certificates now may increase by uh, like the list that I have up on the screen right now will probably double and in a couple of years it'll probably triple um, the list of degree programs probably won't move that much other questions I have a whole set of um, slides that I used to show how certificates fit together, but I don't want to, I don't want to poison your, uh, <laughs> I don't want to poison the pot and, uh, and, and start to seed design ideas because I'd much rather see what folks come up with. I just wanted to quickly point out, um, folks may have already seen this. If you go on to DevPost and our resources page uh, tab at the top, uh, we do provide a list of suggested certificates um, and really we're hoping the tool will um, be able to mix and match any three certificates to achieve a result. And, you know, we encourage you to use your imagination on kind of the different combinations and, and what may result there. Um, so, yeah, uh, another thing to point out is um, we do have a uh, um, some certificates have an uh, asterisk next to it. Uh, that means it's a technical certificate, so it may re require um, prerequisites. Uh, if you don't have a uh, computing background, um, that's not something I think folks need to worry about now. Is that correct, Andrea? 
Yeah, and there's yeah. two constraints that would be, um, as you're thinking about this, I'm imagining, uh, you know, I'm going to say that it's a virtual reality app. You grab a certificate, you grab another certificate, you push them together, and uh, and out pops the possible master's degrees that can can uh, result from that the integration of those two certificates. Now, if you grab a cybersecurity certificate which has an asterisk, and you try to mash it together with front end development, um, it's gonna want to know whether you have the uh, technical skills to get into the cybersecurity certificate, or you're going to have to mash it together with the advanced or with the uh, computer science foundation certificate first. So that's the constraint number one. If you don't have the background to go right into a computer science related master's degree, then you need to do that CS foundation certificate and that unlocks all those technical certificates. So you can imagine how an interactive environment might communicate that by, you know, in this VR example I'm imagining, if you grab two things and try to put them together and they won't mesh until you, you know, have the right one to mesh together, there's lots of ways that that might be communicated through tactile feedback, through colors, through, um, and these are the design choices that you might make, um, but you'll be constrained because it's a web app, so uh, it's a little bit different. And the other constraint is that, um, you know, if you want to be able to get an HCI degree out of a stack of certificates, then you need to include a stack, a, an HCI certificate in that stack. Um, you can't just take any three certificates and get any degree. So um, somehow the, the interface needs to communicate. When you put these two certificates together, that sets you up to get this variety of degrees. Maybe a um, data science, and an information system certificate together could either lead to information systems or data science. And then you have um, a set of, of uh, you know, so, so you, you want to be able to see if I want to get these two certificates, what degrees can I end up with from there? I guess if we don't have any more questions now, um, we can move over to dev post and just go through registration and project submission um, and team building if you want, and we can always come back and answer more questions later. Does that sure. work? Always, yeah, please do. Um, and if you want to enter any questions in the chat, um, we're, that's a fine thing to do as well. And if you have any questions while I'm going, please feel free to stop me as well. So Andrew, if you don't mind, I'm going to share my screen real quick. Okay, can you guys see that okay? So for those of you that aren't familiar with DevPost, um, DevPost is an online platform for hosting and managing hackathons. Um, we currently use it for our own hackathon at CCI Philly CodeFest, which is actually wrapping up right now. Um, it's basically just a nice intuitive way for you guys to submit your projects. Um, there's also a number of resources on here that can be useful to you. So I'll just start off, Andrew, you kind of ran through the overview already. Carrie pointed out the resources in here. Um, and there's also a rules tab that gives you a little more info about that. Um, what I wanted to focus on first, um, I already registered for this event, so you're gonna see start submission here. But if you haven't done so already, go to devpost.com, um, create your account, and then come on over to, what is it, cci-design-comp.devpost.com. And we also have links to this from our CCI site and basically all our other communications that are going out. Um, and you would go here and register. So instead of the start submission button, you would see a register for event button. Um, once you're registered, you're gonna show up in this participants list. If anyone out there is interested in collaborating with someone else, um, this is a great platform to connect with other potential team members here. Um, when you go through and, I'm just gonna go through and update my profile, it's not too exciting, but, um, 
you can see in here, there's a, there's a couple different things that would be useful. Um, fill out your skills, fill out your interests, um, education, that'll be visible to everybody else. But once you go back to the event itself, you can identify if you're working solo, looking for teammates or already have a team. Um, this isn't necessary, but if you are actively looking for teammates, um, checking this here would make it visible to everyone else at the event, or at least everyone else that's registered at this point. Um, so that's one way to get in touch with people and try to develop a team from there. If for some reason you're having trouble finding other team members, um, you can always reach out to us and we may be able to contact other members or put out a email notification to everyone else at the event and see if anyone's looking for a team member. Uh, so once you have your account, once you have your team members in mind, um, the next thing you'd wanna do is actually go and create a project. Now, DevPost can be a little confusing here. It's an awesome platform, um, but the one thing that's a little confusing is, A, you have to create a project first, and that gets added to your portfolio. So if you take a look at my portfolio here, um, I have this CodeFest test project. So once I have a project in my portfolio, I'm then able to go back to our event and submit it. Um, I don't want to waste your time walking you through step by step on how to create and submit a project it's pretty intuitive and DevPost does an awesome job documenting it there's even some nice videos i did create a discussion board post here um, so if you go under discussions and there's a little paragraph here on and you can check out the videos and the documentation on adding the projects to your portfolio which it's pretty straightforward once you go through these directions once you have that project and you're registered for the event, you can just go back into here and it'll walk you through how to submit that project, which is really simple. It's actually, if I just go to start submission, it'll ask me to give my project a name and give it a brief elevator pitch. And Actually, I don't wanna add it because we can't delete them once I add it. Um, we ran through that with our last hackathon. Um, if for some reason you do add a project and you need it deleted or you mess something up, just reach out. Um, we can help with anything. We can assist with making any changes or have DevPost remove the projects for you. Uh, I would suggest using this discussion board um, if you have any discussions that may apply to everyone or even yourself, um, or if you want to get any feedback from anyone, collaborate with anyone on anything, um, this is basically just a forum. And once you get in there and get some conversation going, you may find some useful information there. If you have questions on how to register, how to create an account, anything, um, you can comment on the discussion. I'll get notified. I will definitely get back to you. Um, or you can go over here on the bottom right and uh, the email the hackathon manager. You can always reach out that way. And I think, Curry, you guys send out a number of different ways to get in touch with Zillow, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So if you need anything, please don't hesitate to reach out. I know, especially right now with the lack of human interaction, um, it could be a little difficult to form teams or a little difficult to try to get feedback on anything. Um, we are here to help um, if you need us. Uh, you won't see this managed tab. Updates, I would keep an eye on this throughout the event, but whatever you do, if you plan on participating, I would go into DevPost after this meeting, um, create your account, and then register for this event. This way, anytime we add anything to the discussion or anytime we push out an update, so email messages, any correspondence like that, um, it'll get logged here but you'll also get email notifications for it. Um, same with discussions. So if I had a new discussion post, um, following up on a topic that we discussed here tonight, um, you'll get a notification for that. And you can easily jump into the discussion and contribute. For now, you're not going to see anything in this project gallery. And once you start submitting your projects, um, you won't actually see it right away either. The way the project gallery works in dev posts is we actually have to view the projects first and then release them to the gallery. So if when you do get around to submitting your project, if you have any questions about whether it's submitted successfully or not, um, please feel free to reach out. I mean, it's pretty easy for you to tell because it'll show that your submission was submitted already. Sorry, you won't see this start submission button anymore. 
but I can easily check on our end and double check and let you know if you have any questions about that. Once um, the deadline gets closer, we'll start enabling the projects for the project gallery so you can actually see your project in there. We don't want to make everything public right away because I don't know, a lot of stuff's in progress and we don't want people kind of getting in there any sooner than they have to be. I know I think I just ran through a lot, but um, I think that's all I have on the dev post stuff. If you guys have any questions, please feel free to speak up or contact me or anyone else after this meeting as well. I just wanted to quickly point out um, some questions that were asked in the chat, um, being that I don't think they'll be uh, captured in the recording. Um, we had a question of what is the maximum and minimum number of team members uh, permitted in the competition? Um, you can submit individually. Obviously, teams are encouraged. There is no limit on the number of people per team. Um, we do recommend not going over three to four uh, people because it can get pretty complicated. Um, we will have a recording of this available on our YouTube channel and we'll link to it from our dev post page. Uh, and then we just had another question come in. Are there any bonus points for developing a prototype with actual code versus a design tool? I'm fiercely typing an answer to that. So, I'll <laughs> okay. um, so I shouldn't say fiercely, there's nothing fierce about it, furiously maybe. Um, and not in the sense that I'm angry, Alex. <laughs> uh, so, so not in the sense that like no code is better than, or code is better than no code. Um, because it's a prototype and well, um, Joe here with us is a senior software developer here at the college and his team is going to be working on implementing um, uh, the tool, I should say, there's no guarantee that the exact, um, like the winners will be translated um, uh, exactly into what happens on the CCI website. Um, uh, the timelines for software development, if any of you are familiar with uh, how that works, are pretty tight. Um, so so the, the bonus associated with having an actual interactive web-based prototype is that if you can communicate what the design does in a clearer and um, uh, more succinct way, um, by building out pieces of it, by building out functional pieces of your prototype, um, that could be very helpful. But there's certainly no like automatic, hey, this person actually built something, therefore it's a better design. Um, but if you can build something and thereby communicate what you what your design better, um, then that certainly could be considered an advantage. Um, that said, there are lots of ways of communicating interactivity without building out the actual website. Um, and it's unlikely that the development team would be able to just take prototype code and be able to port it into the live project because of the constraints associated with like working with the back end that keeps track of all the actual courses and certificates and stuff like that. I hope that's a fair description, Joe, <laughs> of, of what's likely to happen. Um, I don't want to get too in the weeds with implementation details, but. No, I'd say that's really accurate. Um, one suggestion I would have, if you're considering writing code, um, there's, not, there's not a lot of time in this competition. Um, and like Andrea said, it, it could be really beneficial to kind of displaying like, here's the intended interaction. But at the same time, if you kind of get caught in the weeds, um, writing functions to do something that you could use a prototyping tool to emulate quickly. Um, I would suggest writing less code. I mean, I'm one of the developers that's going to write this. So I would love to see code, but I don't want to see you guys waste your time. Um, when you, it, this is more of a user interface, user interaction design competition and less of like an actual application development competition. So it would be cool but absolutely not necessary. So anyone here that doesn't have any programming experience, um, you are definitely not going to get things for that. Um, anyway, I would advise you to polish your videos as much as possible to really show the interaction. Um, the one thing we do in our in-person hackathons is um, we have kind of a science fair situation where our judges walk around to the teams and the teams give this sales pitch in like three to five minutes. Um, 
where that's your opportunity to shine right there. That's your opportunity to sell this project. Um, I would suggest you spend a lot of time focusing on that um, and not so much like, can I really make it work? As long as you make it look like it works in this context, um, that's absolutely good enough. All right, I hope that didn't make it more complicated. Uh, we just had another question come in. Will we be able to see a display of everyone's submitted product once the competition is finished? And um, Joe, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe all submissions will be shown in the project gallery. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. Once they all come Great. through, once we get ready to start judging, everything will be visible in the project gallery. Um, feel free to check everyone's project out and encourage them and post some feedback. Yeah, I, I want to just like underscore how uh, how much I hope people will use communication channels either in dev posts or however you talk to uh, folks who are in your classes. I know, you know, there's been a, a fairly quiet Slack team that was uh, started after um, after a survey went out to the HCI UX community at CCI. A lot of folks were enthusiastic about Slack. Um, so that's another channel uh, you can, you know, private message or create private groups and, and, and talk to folks. Um, you can post public calls, um, you know, use the tools that you have to be able to connect with other students. There is this requirement that there's a CCI student involved in each of the projects. Um, uh, the, that does not, that does not in any way mean that we don't want to see students from other colleges across campus involved. Um, this is anchored in the CCI curriculum. Um, the design itself is intended to feature um, aspects of this college. Um, and so we want to see involvement from CCI students. That said, reach out across, you know, college, if you know folks from Westfall who are, you know, graphic designers, if you know folks from engineering or, or um, you know, affiliated with the Excite Center or the App Lab or um, these different sort of entities on, on campus, if you've run into folks in courses, uh, reach out, see, see what kind of teams you can develop. Um, I'm, this is one of the things we're missing out on with, uh, with, with quarantine and I, I hope we can overcome it a little bit um, using the communication tools that we have. Any other questions? Um, next question is, uh, should the design be limited to Drexel's look and function with Sitecore, or should it go out of Drexel's look and feel? So I would personally be very excited to see something that did not adhere to the Drexel guidelines for <laughs> design as far as colors and functionality. Um, I, I, Joe, you can probably speak more to, I don't know if we even want to introduce constraints that you'll actually have to deal with um, in producing this thing. Um, I kind of don't want to. I want to see what we can come up with because my, this is my philosophy, is that you, you ask for forgiveness, not permission in a lot of things in life. And if you come up with something spectacular that doesn't fit the mold, um, you propose it. You don't say like, well, this could never work because the existing rules don't allow it. If it's awesome, propose it. See if the existing rules can bend. Um, test those boundaries. That's, that's, that's my philosophy of design and a lot of other things. So I would love to see um, designs that go outside of what we expect on a Drexel website. Yeah, I completely agree with Andrea. I mean, we're kind of locked in that box um, for all the development we do within the college, and it is not nearly as much fun to use a preset number of colors and a preset number of fonts. Um, ultimately, that'll be our job to worry about kind of reigning whatever it is in and making it blue or gold. But um, I, I wouldn't, I, yeah, I agree, Andrew. I wouldn't put that constraint on the competition itself. It takes a lot of the fun out of it. We can sit comfortably with silence. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> uh, next uh, question is, um, is there a specific guideline for the video presentation? Uh, what are the expectations aside from showcasing the prototype walking through our design process as a whole? So 
So you can tell we haven't talked about this. <laughs> specific question yeah we're like "Hmm, (laughs) that's a good question yeah (laughs) Um, I mean the major feature of the video presentation is uh communicating why this design is exceptional right and 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 how you got there might be part of the story and lend confidence to the conclusions that you draw as far as like you know this is why this design is right if you make a video that simply showcases a um a design and the next person makes a video that showcases the same design, but also includes, uh, this is the, the, our, the here's, some, here's a snapshot of the brainstorming session and how you know, wild it got with all of these ideas. And here's how we got feedback from Drexel students about what works for them. Um, those, little, those little bits of justification, why this design works, can go a long way to, to lend confidence in, um, in the choices that you made. So I think it's a good practice. I don't think that you should create a, um, we started by you know, doing this, then we had a brainstorming session. You know, that's not gonna be an engaging video. So don't tell the story of your design process in the video, but highlighting how you got to the end result um, can be really effective in communicating about design. Um, So that, hopefully that, um, hopefully that answers the question. I think walking through the design process as the substance of the video is not going to be as engaging, but including aspects of how you got to the design can be very effective. There's also an area in your project submission itself um, where you can provide documentation. Um, You can provide a narrative um, that's totally separate from the video. Um, So feel free to use that. I know a lot of our participants in other events, they kind of use that as their area to say, like, what were their specific challenges or how did they overcome those challenges and how did they end up creating the um, final product that they created? Um, But like Andrea said, your video is your sales pitch. So that's, that's my only suggestion. Last call for any questions. Uh, Well, I did mention this in the chat. Um, If you have any questions after this, feel free to reach out to me. Um, My email is kb633 at drexel.edu, or you can uh, contact us via dev post uh, in the right-hand column. There's the email, the hackathon manager, uh, and we will get back to you as soon as possible. Uh, And I wanna thank uh, Andrea Forte tonight, uh, and Joe Adair for um, fielding all these great questions Um, and uh, want to wish everyone good luck in the competition and we're really looking forward to seeing what you come up with. Yeah, thank you everyone. And good luck, don't hesitate to reach out. Yeah, Yeah. for sure. See you all online. Bye. Have a good night.